Section 1 of the Prevention of Crime Act 1953 makes it an offence to have in your possession an offensive weapon without lawful excuse or authority. But what is an offensive weapon? That's what we're looking at today. But first of all, if you're new to me, I'm a barrister who helps you understand law, so hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. So in this video, I'm going to explain what an offensive weapon is or what it includes. This is a slight aside from my video on knife law, which you can find in the description. So as you will see from my explanation, it can include knives, but it is not restricted to knives. And in fact, it can be quite broad in application. An offensive weapon is defined as any article made or adapted for use to cause injury to the person or intended by the person having it with him for such use. I'm going to say as a starting point that there is an important principle that just because someone uses an article offensively in a public place by itself and without more is not conclusive that he had it with him for the purposes of causing injury and thus making it an offensive weapon per se. However, an innocent possession of an article may become a guilty possession if you form the intent to use it offensively before the occasion comes about for the need to use it for violence. So although you may have had an item in your pocket perfectly innocently, if you then form the intent to use it offensively against another person, it may very well become an offensive weapon and you may be found guilty under the act. So with that in mind, let's look a little bit more about the categories of offensive weapons. The first category is fairly simple. It is a weapon that has been made for the purpose of causing injury to another. A simple example would be a gun. Its only purpose is to cause harm to somebody else. So most knives wouldn't fit into this category as they usually have another purpose. However, if it's a bayonet, a machete or a stiletto type knife, then these are generally made for the purpose of causing harm and they will fall under this first limb of the definition. The second category is a type of weapon that has been adapted in order to cause injury to another. Even a glass bottle can fall under this category because if you were to, say, deliberately break a glass bottle to form a sharp and or jagged edge for the purposes of causing injury, then this is a weapon which has been adapted to cause injury from another object. Whereas a cricket bat, on the other hand, would not fall under this limb because it hasn't been made or adapted for the purposes of causing injury. Other examples that can come under the first two categories of offensive weapons are things such as flick knives, sword sticks, butterfly knives, petrol bombs, and sand gloves. These are generally taken to be offensive weapons per se, which means unless you can prove that you have them with you for wholly innocent purposes, they are going to be assumed to be an offensive weapon from the outset. But it's the third category that can have a very broad application. This is an item that is neither made nor adapted to cause injury to another person, but it is an article that the person has with him with the intent to cause injury to another person. So quite clearly, almost any object that you can probably see in your peripheral vision right now could be used in some sense or another to cause harm to another person. Even if you were to carry something with you which looks perfectly innocent, but your intent is to carry it with you for the purposes of self-defense, for example, if you were questioned as to why you have this article in your possession and you were to say that you have it for the purposes of self-defense, then this is going to be an offensive weapon in your possession because of your intent to use it in such a way that is likely to cause injury to another person. Many of you may have thought about acid or other corrosive substance attacks. This is likely to fall under the third category because it will be relatively easy to show that there was an intent to cause injury to another person, say if someone is carrying it around in the street and the intent to cause harm can be inferred from the surrounding circumstances. Those for example being if it has been transferred into a container or some other kind of bottle that would make it easier to use as a weapon, as opposed to a standard bottle which will have a locked cap and be much more difficult to open. So as with many situations in law, it is the intent of the person in question that really matters. Not just what the intent is, but when that intent was formed. For example, if you happen to have an object in your pocket and you are attacked out in the street and your first instinct is to use that item in self-defense, whilst there'll be separate questions as to whether the use of that article in your pocket amounts to reasonable force, but that is a question of reasonable force and self-defense. If you want to hear more about that, I have another video which I'll link in the description. But so long as you didn't form that intent before that situation arises, 
then it's not likely that it's going to be inferred that you are carrying this item as an offensive weapon with the intent to cause injury to another. On the other hand, I've seen many articles that look very much like they are designed and adapted to cause injury to somebody whilst somewhat disguised to be carried as say a piece of jewellery or some other kind of concealed sharp point, blunt object and things of that nature. So particularly these days with reverse image search, if you reverse image search a particular article and it comes up on a website and it's being sold as a self-defense weapon or some kind of self-defense tool, something that is concealed that you can carry that looks like an ordinary object but really its main purpose is to be carried and used as a self-defense weapon, then it may very well be considered an offensive weapon under the Act because it will be inferred that you are carrying it as an offensive weapon. As I said, it comes back to the intent. So if this is an article that is designed and being sold on a website for the sole purpose of being a self-defensive weapon, then one may very well infer that you buying this item from that website, you have already formed the intent that you are going to carry this item with you as a self-defense weapon. Then of course, there is the question about so-called self-defense pepper sprays. So I must make it absolutely clear that pepper sprays are not legal in the UK, and in fact, they are considered to be a firearm. This is because they are likely to fall under Section 51B of the Firearms Act 1968. And this is because there is a fairly broad definition as follows. Any weapon of whatever description designed or adapted for the discharge of any noxious liquid, gas or other thing. So I'm afraid virtually any kind of pepper spray is likely to fall under this section of the Act and cannot be carried as a self-defense weapon. Although I must admit I've seen lots of websites selling various sprays that advertise them as legal and non-toxic, but I would seek formal legal advice on any specific product that you buy before you decide to carry it around. The only way you'll be safe to use such a product is if it's something that is designed and tested and proven not to cause injury, it's not intended to cause injury and it's not used in such a way that it causes injury. For example, it's only staining someone's clothing or creating a smell which just creates the distraction to allow you to escape. But as I said, without taking formal advice on the specific item in question, I would not personally carry anything around without knowing this for sure. And finally, the only fully legal self-defense product is a rape alarm. These are not expensive, they are extremely loud they can be carried easily, and believe me, they can be extremely disorienting, and a loud sound coming from a martial artist is going to be one of the most disorienting things from someone that attacks you that they won't expect. So whilst this doesn't leave you with many options, I hope the explanation was clear and useful. Please give this video a thumbs up if it was useful to you. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.